Tony Elliott's journey to becoming the head coach at Virginia has not been an easy one. From being homeless to walking on at Clemson to even giving up a good paying engineering job to pursue coaching, Tony's journey to become a head coach is anything but normal. But who is Tony Elliott and why was he the right hire at Virginia? Stay tuned to find out. Before we get into whether Tony Elliott was the right hire for Virginia, let's talk about his backstory. Tony Elliott was born on November 26, 1979 in Watsonville, California. When Tony was four, his parents separated and he lived on the streets of Los Angeles with his mom and sister for a period of time. During that time period, Tony was nearly killed when a truck hit him as he stepped into the street outside the salon his mom worked at. The accident left him with a broken arm, four broken ribs, severe road burn, and a lacerated spleen. After undergoing life-saving surgery, Tony had to learn to walk again. When Tony was nine, his mother was killed in a car accident and he was right there with her. After the car accident, Tony's father wanted him to come live with him, but was then sent to jail. As a result, Tony and his sister were sent to live in Atlanta with their father's brother until he got out. Then his sister Brandy and Tony were separated when their father went to jail once again a few months later. Elliot focused on keeping his life on track and moved to James Island, South Carolina, which is near Charleston, to go live with his aunt and uncle. The family didn't have enough money to support both children, so Tony's sister went to go live with their other aunt in Atlanta. Tony spoke on the separation from his sister telling ESPN back in 2015, There were a lot of nights when I cried myself to sleep, wanting answers. I wasn't mad at anyone. I just wanted answers. The entire time, I had a little sister who looked up to me and saw me as her dad, mother, and big brother. Tony turned to sports as an outlet, going on to become a basketball and football star at James Island High School. He was recruited by several FCS programs, including Furman, Wofford, and the Citadel, and he eventually chose an appointment to the U.S. Air Force Academy Preparatory School in 1998. However, after a year in Colorado Springs, Colorado, he decided a military career wasn't the right fit for him. He told ESPN, I thought I was there for the wrong reasons. I was there to play football and I thought I was taking someone else's spot. He returned to James Island where he would get a job as a cashier at Publix as well as a construction laborer job to save enough money for college tuition. In 1999, he enrolled at Clemson and walked onto the football team as a freshman playing wide receiver. He lettered in four straight seasons and earned a scholarship as a junior. As a senior in 2003, Elliott was named a co-captain and had 23 catches for 286 yards with one touchdown. His position coach at the time, current Clemson head coach Dabo Sweeney. Sweeney told ESPN, he was such a great leader, and I had such great respect for him. He was a student of the game, I could never give him enough. He was a meticulous note taker and would always ask great questions. He was always about maximizing his ability and loved his teammates. One of the things I always loved about him was that he was always trying to serve his teammates. He also continued to support his sister using part of his scholarship money to make sure Brandy had what she needed. After graduating from Clemson with a bachelor's degree in industrial engineering, Elliot took a job with Michelin North America in 2004. Although Elliot was making good money and seemed to have a bright future with the company, he wasn't completely satisfied. He missed football and believed his own experience in life would make him a good mentor for kids. While working as a volunteer football coach at a high school in Easley, South Carolina, Elliot realized what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. Elliot spoke on the decision to leave his job saying, I was making great money, had a great job, and a great boss. I just felt a little empty inside. I needed something to validate my purpose. Elliot spoke with Dabo about quitting his job and a week after quitting, he married his wife and then started his first coaching job at South Carolina State in 2006, an FCS school. Two years later, he became the wide receiver coach for Furman. Sweeney saw that his friend was a rising star in the coaching ranks and said, I told him to just bloom where you're planted and be great at whatever you're doing. That's the epitome of Tony Elliott. I was so proud of him. I knew I could hire him when the right time came. I told him he needed to be ready when the time came. Hey you, yeah, you. How would you grade the Tony Elliott hire? Let me know in the comment section below. If you're enjoying this video, make sure to leave a like, a comment, and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate it because it really helps the video in the algorithm. In 2011, Sweeney invited Elliott over to his house for dinner and offered him a job at Clemson. Tony would accept the position and would go on to coach the running backs for four years and then had the keys of the offense handed over to him after Chad Morris left to become the head coach at SMU. He served as the co-offense coordinator with wide receiver coach Jeff Scott. Scott told ESPN, I think he has a great demeanor and he and I get along very well. Our personalities are a great fit. We've been in the same offense together and we've been in the same meetings. It's been a seamless transition. In 2017, the Tigers went on to beat Alabama to win the national championship. The following season, Elliott was given the Broyles Award 
which is given to the top assistant in college football. In 2019, Elliott called the plays in Clemson's 44-16 win over Alabama in the national title game. He served as the primary offense play caller for the Tigers from 2015 to 2021 and coached the running backs and tight ends while at Clemson. He was also the primary recruiter for both of those positions. In 2021, he was named the associate head coach, and during his time as the primary play caller at Clemson, he helped lead the Tigers to an 89-10 record. He turned down the Tennessee job last year, but decided this year was time to become a head coach. He was viewed as a leading candidate for the Duke job before interviewing twice in Charlottesville after Bronco Mendenhall stepped down as Virginia's head coach. On December 10th, Virginia named Tony Elliott the 41st head coach for the Cavaliers football program. At one point, there were talks that the deal may fall through after it hit a snag in negotiations, but that was quickly resolved. He spoke on why he took the Virginia job, saying, I sat down probably three years ago and kind of outlined really what it, I was looking for, mentioned high academic standards, the ability to recruit high caliber people, and playing in a top flight conference. He impressed many in his introductory press conference, but had his back against the wall when it came to recruiting, only being hired a few days before the early signing period. NCAA rules prevented him from meeting with recruits in person, but he told them to trust that I'm going to do everything I can to build a staff that you can be proud of. His goal is to recruit the state of Virginia hard to keep the talent home. He will also need to recruit current players to stay at Virginia. It looks like star Brennan Armstrong may be returning, with Armstrong telling the pilot, I'm not going to transfer. It's either here or the NFL. And he believes Elliott has the resume and is one of the best in the game when it comes to offensive coordinators. Mendenhall gave Elliott complete access to the team, but he reiterated it was Broncos team until after the bowl game. Unfortunately, due to the ongoing events of 2020, the Cavaliers bowl game was canceled. The next step for Elliott will be to put together a strong staff. So was this a good hire for Virginia? Clemson beat writer Grace Raynor writes, Elliott has been ready to be a head coach for the past couple of years, and this move makes sense for both parties. First and foremost, Elliott knows the ACC. He has spent more than a decade at Clemson and can recruit this part of the country well. He's known for being down to earth and his ability to connect with prospects. Virginia has lost many recruits to other ACC programs, but perhaps he can keep some of that top talent home. Secondly, Virginia's administration will love that Elliott is a former engineer. The school has a strong academic background, and Elliott, who formerly worked at Michelin, worked as an industrial engineer before getting back into football. Personally, I think it is a great hire for Virginia. Elliott is a great recruiter and comes from a winning culture. He's extremely smart, which means he will fit in well at Virginia, which has high academic standards. He has coached in the ACC for decades and knows the landscape. I think this should be a fun team to keep an eye on in the coming years. But what do you think? Was Tony Elliott the right hire for Virginia? Let me know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out my other videos right here. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, remember to embrace the grind.